All right, I thought this would be a pretty cool little follow-up to what we've been doing on the last couple videos, which is, um, you know, we had a drive that we put in the freezer, um, went through and looked at it, and you could see that there was, you know, some crystallization of um, frost and stuff like that on the platter. Um, did it again with this drive here, actually, uh, a little bit more thorough. We actually put a desiccant into the... Um, the bag as well had it ziplocked, wrapped. Um, there's no breather hole on this drive, so uh, this was as airtight as a hard drive can generally get. So, um, and we wanted to kind of just show it doesn't matter what condition you're dealing with, you're still going to have the potential to have some uh, frost buildup on the platter surface when you put it in the freezer, um, like that. And you know, it's also good to keep in mind that putting it in the freezer does not repair a set of damaged heads. Um, it does not repair uh, corrupted firmware which can also exhibit symptoms as though a head has been damaged. So um, the only thing it may ever have anything to do with is the electronics themselves and actually if you have a chip that's overheating um, things like that, uh, if it's getting hot right away um, the cold temperature may uh, Put that symptom off a bit, but um, for the most part, you really take a risk by putting it in the freezer because of what it can do um, when you fire up the drive the first time, which I think we've shown with this drive. Um, the instant we powered it up, it tried to calibrate and it was starting to, and then it just lost the heads because the heads hit the area of the platter that actually had the little bit of accumulation of frost that were on there. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through and just use this opportunity to repair this hard drive and cross our fingers that it works. I didn't leave it running long enough to do any real damage to the platter surface or anything like that. Um, but we'll go through and I'll power it up quickly uh, just as kind of a follow up to show you what the drive uh, is doing. So we'll go over here to one of our imagers and um, get this set up. And like so, this is just to show you kind of the symptom that the drive has now after it came out of the freezer. Now watch, it'll probably work, but it didn't work whenever uh, we first pulled it out. I'm going to go ahead and apply power to it. It's just starting to spin up. Okay, you hear the head clicking. That's that ticking sound. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and spin that down. So basically what we have here is a drive that um, was working before we did the, uh, the last video. Put the drive in the freezer uh, for about 18 hours. Um, pulled it out of the freezer and immediately went to go power it up and uh, this is the symptom that it had. So uh, there's no doubt that that's a, a head problem. Um, as soon as we open the drive up you can see frost that accumulated on the platter surface. Um, so we're going to go through now and uh, swap out these heads, uh, put another set of good heads in there and um, see if it works. So we'll get started on uh, on the next phase of it. Alrighty, continuing on now with our little experiment with the drive that we froze which then killed the heads. Um, we're going to go through now and swap the heads out with another just extra part strap that we had here that matches up with this one. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is go through and disassemble this drive. And I want to show you something that's kind of unique with uh, Western Digital Drives. Um, like I said, this is very informal. I, uh, I'm not even planning on even going through and doing like a full recovery on this drive or anything like that. I just want to kind of show what it is that uh, that we see a lot with, uh, with these drives and also too to give kind of an idea of what it is that makes them a little more difficult than others uh, to work on. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is move the controller board from this. Go through and mark the board 
products that we're working with just to make sure I, I mark everything. I just want to make sure nothing, you know, there's nothing, nothing that gets confused here. We definitely don't want to go through and put the wrong set of heads on a drive. Um, one thing I'll show you though too, um, we get a lot of times people send in drives that are like, oh, well, I just wanted to see if there was anything um, scratched on the platter or what it looked like inside. Um, with Western Digital Drives, the way that they are set up, the head alignment on these is actually crucial, and it's pretty much uh, determined initially by the cover of the um, of the case cover alignment. And so, you don't necessarily have to remove, even if you were in a clean room environment or anything like that. A lot of times, even we don't go through and just, you know, with uh, disregard, just start taking the case cover off on these drives because it may create more work than what we really need to do. Um, first thing we'll do a lot of times, and it may be a good idea anyway to do it on this one, so we're not wasting our time because we know, like I said, after that drive was frozen, it started clicking right away. Um, there's a little access sticker type deal here underneath the drive. So be really careful about peeling it off. Um, but essentially what it'll do is give you a way of looking at the platter surface without actually having to open the drive. Um, underneath here you can see the bottom side of the platter through that little opening. Not only that, but even if you don't see anything that's obvious there, you can actually tell if there's anything, any debris that might have floated around in there and got stuck onto this adhesive part of this uh, sticker. So there's that one there, and I don't see anything on there, and I don't see any scratches on the bottom. Um, there's also one on the side too, usually. Like I said, if, if it's something you just, you're like, wow, it sounds really horrible in my drive. It sounds like somebody dropped a bunch of sand in there. Um, yeah, it might be okay to go through and just peel that back and take a look before you spend the money shipping it in or something. Because if you see it, it looks like charcoal inside there on that label or anything like that. That's a good sign that the platter's damaged and there's really no reason to even sending it in at that point. So just a, a little FYI. Once we get in here, I'll show you another thing that makes these drives a little more difficult to work with. Now, this is a 500 gig drive, so I mean it's a little more difficult than a 80 gig, but it's uh, you know the, the, the bigger the drives get, the tighter the data density gets per platter to try to fit more data onto each platter surface. Well, the problem you run into is whenever you have just very minute tolerances for misalignment on the heads, then you run into problems where if there are any alignment issues with the replacement set of heads, um, it can really be a nightmare to try to get everything reset. Now actually with this one, what I normally do is since these heads here, this drive's already been open. Um, this type of drive here is not as bad as some of the others. Uh, we have a whole process that we go through when we're dealing with drives where we know the platters are parked on the, uh, on the uh, when we know that the heads are parked on the platter surface. Um, but I'm going to show you something here quickly. And this drive here has six heads in it. But the problem that you run into with uh, Western Digital drives is, like I was saying, with that case cover alignment. Um, these heads just fit loosely inside here. I don't know if you can see that moving or not on there, but they just fit loosely. There's no screw holding these heads in place. It's only because the case cover here holds it down. Actually, this part of the case cover is what comes in contact with this area of the head and holds that in place. So with Western Digitals, they actually have blank platters when they first assemble the drives. Most hard drive manufacturers um, at least have the servo tracks written to the platters ahead of time. Western Digitals is not the case. The drives are assembled with blank platters, the heads are installed, 
then the case cover goes on and only then are the tracks written. So when you get into where you're dealing with Western Digitals, the track, initial track alignment on the platter is completely random. It's dependent upon um, you know, variations in the heads and also uh, variations in this alignment. I mean, you can shift just a few millimeters one way or the other and it's going to throw the alignment completely off, which is why you'd be really cautious about taking them apart when the heads are parked on the, uh, the platter itself. There's just something inherently more difficult about those getting them realigned than these are. Um, just one of the nuances of the drive itself. Like I said, this is extremely informal. I'm not even wearing gloves on this job. Um, this is just something we're just kind of just seeing if this is even going to work. So we're just going to go ahead and finish on. tool for doing this but I've, it's hard to do it with the camera right here for removing those magnets and it works a lot better than just using a screwdriver but again this is not an actual customer drive um, from there we'll go through and I'll pull this up now another thing also is Another thing is, this is not, I repeat, not how you offload a set of heads. However, I know these heads are bad. That's a given. And I'm not really worried about this drive. This is just kind of a demonstration. So, we're doing it the informal way here. There's a whole process when it goes to loading and offloading heads that you have to follow because you can't let the heads come in contact with each other um, whenever you offload them. And by that, I'll show you here what I mean. When these heads come off of here, you don't want them to do this. You don't want them to come together like that. So then, when you have the heads come together like that, they're pretty much toast. Because when you pull, when you go through to get them apart again, a lot of times they stick together and they're just a mess. So when you're dealing with two heads, there's ways to do it that are fairly easy, but when you're dealing with six heads, it gets pretty difficult. And I'm not going to show that on this video either. Um, so basically, that's it. The heads are off the parking ramp, and now, like I said, there's no screw holding these in place, so it's just a matter of sliding them up off of this axle that they're on. That's it. That's all they do, and that's what makes them difficult. They just fit loosely in there, and then you can set them down in with that. lift them up off there. So I kind of wanted to show you that just to see what we're talking about. Sometimes people are like, oh, well, what makes them more difficult than others? Well, yes, this part is easier because you get the heads right off, but it also causes problems with head alignment and things like that. So that's the disassembly of this drive. I'm going to go through now and I'm going to take our parts drive and what you saw me do just right here, uh, I'm just going to reverse that process, pull the heads out of the parts drive. Um, and then reload them onto this drive and then reassemble everything and that's it. We'll get to it where we'll see if this will even work. I don't know that it will, but I didn't see anything obvious that would uh, preclude this drive from being able to function. I mean, there's no obvious damage to the platter that I can see. All right, that's it. Uh, on to the next step and we'll uh, take it to imaging after I get the new heads in. Okay, we have our replacement heads installed, and we have the drive set up on our, our imager again, and um, this is just an example, so I just have a 2 terabyte drive sitting over here, that's going to be our destination drive, and uh, we'll go ahead and power this drive up. Okay, for a second there, I didn't think it was going to spin up even. So it's in a busy state here. Um, looks like the heads took, so that's good, and we'll refresh, and yep, 
there is our drive again. Sweet. Okay, and we'll go through and just, um, I'm not going to build a head map or anything like that on here. I'm just going to go through and just see if I can even get it to start the imaging process. Okay, and there we go. Drives imaging. It's actually imaging very well. Um, I'm always surprised uh, when we get Western Digital drives that actually image a fairly good clip right off the bat. They're really, really finicky when it comes to head swaps. And uh, usually we have to play around with the head alignment a little bit more uh, than this. Usually I would have gone through, powered this up. Probably had some clicking, pause the video, made some adjustments, and come back. But um, this one here, when the heads actually park off of the platters uh, onto that parking ramp, uh, they're a little bit more um, uh, forgiving. So when it comes to head alignment. Um, but anyway, this is it. So it's looking good. We can see down here. Just to give you a little idea of what we'd look at when we're imaging. Um, we can go through and see it has a, um, the NTFS boot sectors are being shown, um, how many files that's being that are being recognized at this point. It also gives us some indication of the types of files that it's seen that are the most critical usually, such as um, images. So here it's already detected um, 71 uh, image files and nine Microsoft Office files, and these are executables here that's detected. So um, anyway, all in all. Um, pretty good deal and uh, it's going along and imaging now so that was a perfect follow-up to uh, to our putting the hard drive in the freezer killing those heads and then uh, going back and fixing the drive so thanks for watching if you have any questions please visit our website at acsdata.com um, if you have a hard drive that's failed we'll be happy to help you uh, we don't charge any evaluation fees on anything ever doesn't matter what type of RAID array configuration or hard drive um, type that it is, no evaluation fees at all. So it costs you absolutely nothing for us to look at your drive. Um, also, in most cases, we don't charge any attempt fees either. Standard hard drives like this, no attempt fees. The only time we ever charge an attempt fee is if a drive's already been opened by another company. Um, or you get into some of the really big RAID arrays and things like that. So, uh, anyway. That's it. Visit our website again, acsdata.com, or give us a call 1-800-717-8974. Thanks for watching.